Hello and welcome back to Ada Pulse, the community funded news channel for the Cardano community. Yeah, and as I said, we're community funded through Catalyst. So with this channel, you don't get any coin shilling, no discussion on token price. We're just here to disseminate information. So uh, on that note, as usual, please do like, share, subscribe and hit that bell button so you can get notified as soon as we've got content available. Now we're in the UK here. It's offing freezing. Uh, I've been ill, hence the face herpes, so I don't need that in the comments. But I'm still on a high because we've got a great article here today. And so here it is. It, as usual, can be found on the Ada Pulse website. And it's the extensive guide on EUTXO, UTXO and the account base model. So basically, we'll be talking about how different chains transact. And what's also exciting, this is an article by Blocksplained one of our new writers that have been onboarded with Ada Pulse. And that has only been possible to the fact that we've got the Catalyst funding. So it's a really exciting day. So before we go on, I'm Josh from ATM State Pool, your presenter for Ada Pulse. Let's crack on with this. Right, so as we mentioned in the intro, um, today we're discussing how UTXO system works uh, compared to accounts based model. But then we're also going to talk about the, the difference EUTXO brings, which is just for um, Cardano. So let's start with Ethereum, because Ethereum uses the accounts based model. Now, the accounts based model is, is pretty simple. I'm going to put it here, it is. Um, it's pretty basic. And and it works like this is how banks work. So it's quite, a you know, this isn't a new thing they came up with. It's it's quite a well standardized system. Basically, how it works is the network sort of records the value of each wallet or address in this case. And when you send um, sort of finances from one wallet to another or one account to another, even it basically records the, the change in state. So one wallet is less say 10 and another wallet is plus that 10 and that's and that's simply that's basically how it works um but we're not really going to go into too much depth here i'm going to put a link uh in the description below so you can sort of dig more dig a bit more deeper into the account space model there are other benefits to the account based model but uh that i just want to give you a, a brief outline the utxo based model now, the UTXO model is actually, in crypto terms, the oldest trick in the book because not everyone knows this is what Bitcoin actually uses. And it's much more complex than the accounts based model, which is why I'm giving it a lot more attention uh, in this article. And so the basics really are that transactions consume unspent outputs, which, which produce more outputs that can then be used as inputs. Sound confusing? Let's make this a little easier for you. So check out this graphic. So as you can see, you've got these two UTXO inputs and they're going into a transaction. But what this transaction is doing is actually creating multiple UTXO outputs. So when an output is used in a transaction, it becomes spent and then it cannot be used again so let's deep dive into utxo so let's say we've got two people alice and bob it's always alice and bob let's put alice there bob there and their unspent transactions are as follows so they basically got wallets with one utxo in it each alice has 100 ada in her wallet and her one utxo and bob has 50 ada now so let's take uh, like a really simple transaction. All Alice wants to do is send Bob 10 ADA. Right. So look at this uh, image for you. Love images. So as you can see, uh, Alice starts off with her 100 ADA. And, but she sends all of it into, the, into this transaction. But what this transaction then does is it splits it into two UTXOs. Remember, we were talking about multiple UTXO outputs. So actually, Alice receives her change, which is 90 ADA. And Bob, uh, if you notice, has a UTXO of 10 ADA. 
So Bob now actually has two UTXOs in his wallet. One with 50 ADA and one with uh, 10 ADA. So the easiest way to explain a UTXO, it's like a dollar bill or a pound note. So when you go to a shop or, or store with a $10 bill and you're buying something for $5, you don't just tear the bill in half. That's the same as a UTXO. They cannot be split. You have to give over the full $10 and you receive your $5 change. So it really is as simple as that. Now, let's look at a more, a slightly more complex transaction. So you've got Bob and Alice, uh, but they both want to send Charlie 55 ADA each. Now, take a look at the this image. Now, as you can see, all, it's all happening in transaction two. And Alice is sending her whole 90 ADA, like a 90 ADA bill, if you like. But Bob is actually sending twice. He's sending 50 ADA and a 10 ADA. Because remember, the UTXOs cannot be split. So, and because neither of the UTXOs will cover the 55 ADA, he needs to send both. And then if you look at the outputs, there's three UTXO outputs. So you've got Alice has got her 35 ADA change. Bob has got his five ADA change. And Charlie has had all his combined into one UTXO with the 110 ADA. Now, in this case, we've combined the transactions of two. In, in most cases, there'll be separate transactions. But this is actually also, also possible. But the point I wanted to we wanted to show here is that you see that Bob had to use both of his unspent transactions because neither of them were large enough to cover the actual amount that was being sent. So how does EUTXO differ? So we've already discussed UTXO, so that's unspent transaction output. But now we're talking about extended uh, unspent transaction outputs. That's what the E stands for. And this was developed um, specifically for Cardano. Now, the main difference between UTXO and EUTXO is what allows a transaction to be spent. So in a, in a UTXO kind of environment, a, a transaction is only valid if it's signed with the appropriate private keys that are associated with that account. So you know when we say, not your keys, not your coins, this is what we're talking about because this is the only thing that allows the transaction to be valid. So basically, think of it like this. In a UTXO model, there's only one condition that needs to be met. And that is that the appropriate private key is signing the transaction. In EUTXO, there are more general addresses that aren't actually based on the hashes of any of the keys, but on like predefined rules uh, on which uh, an EUTXO can be spent. So essentially what we're talking about here is smart contracts. So instead of a signature, the transaction will justify the unspent transaction can be spent by something called the redeemer, which is essentially an arbitrary piece of data. So each EUTXO in Cardano has two data values. So that's the amount of ADA and something called a datum, which is essentially an arbitrary piece of data. So to make the smart contract work, basically the consuming uh, transaction must provide the redeemer, the datum, and the script itself. EUTXO versus the account-based model. Now to describe this, let's go back a step and talk about UTXO like in Bitcoin. So did you know you can have contracts in Bitcoin? They're not smart contracts as such. Um, but so naturally people call them, you know, dumb contracts. Now, essentially, a script in Bitcoin can only see the redeemer, which is essentially uh, the input of, you know, basically where it's going. So because it's UTXO, it, they are testable and they are more secure. But, you know, like I said, they're, they're not very smart and they, they do have their, their limitations. Now, Ethereum, on the other hand, uh, it sees the entire state of the blockchain. And now this does make the Ethereum smart contracts extremely powerful as they can do pretty much anything. But it does come with problems, um, more noticeably uh, security. But I'm going to come on to that in a second because EUTXO takes the middle ground, you see. So the script sees all the inputs and outputs of a transaction, not just 
the specific redeemer for that UTXO. Now, with this, it can be proven mathematically that Pluto scripts are just as powerful as Ethereum contracts, but without the security implications. So what are the security implications? So let's start with Cardano. You're sending a transaction um, on the blockchain, but in this case, one of the inputs has already been used. So your transaction basically fails and you don't pay any fees as the, like, the transaction's validity, if you like, uh, it's kind of already checked off chain. Now on Ethereum, it's, it's different. In, in the time between creating the transaction and sending it on chain, all sorts of things could happen and your transaction could still go through. So there's a lot of unpredictability there. Now, I mean, probably the biggest bitter pill to swallow for Ethereum users is not only have you got these high transaction fees, but in this case, um, even if your transaction fails, you could still be paying the transaction fee. Now, Ethereum's smart contract language is called Solidity, if you didn't know. Uh, but it does have all sorts of uh, security implications. Um, mainly, uh, the contracts, like, we, like I said, they are they are freaking powerful and they can do almost anything. But it does mean it's a lot harder to test. And also, for 100% security certainty, the entire blockchain must be taken into account. Now, for one, this takes a long time. But also, uh, it's considered impossible due to the chain's like unpredictability. Now, on the other hand, to analyze a Pluto script, so that's, remember, that's Cardano's smart contract language, uh, and you want to make sure it's secure, um, it's quite easy to do, as you only need to look at the specific transaction and not the entire blockchain. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're limiting the scope of, of security analysis because that's, that's all you're looking at. So in this sense, Pluto scripts are, are, are like pure and given the same inputs, they will produce the same outputs, which allow for mathematical proof of security. Other benefits of EUTXO. Now, Bloxplained, as its name suggests, has gone on to list uh, a couple of more benefits of the ETXO model. So firstly is this. Now, due to the local nature of transaction validation, a high degree of parallelism is possible. A node could, in principle, validate transactions in parallel if those transactions do not try to consume the same input. And then goes on to say, a powerful feature of the EUTXO model is that the fees required for a valid transaction can be predicted precisely prior to posting it. Now, this is a unique feature not found in account-based models. See, account-based blockchains like Ethereum are indeterministic. So that basically means they, they can't guarantee the transaction's effect on chain. So this uh, uncertainty presents risks of monetary loss, unexpectedly high fees, and the additional opportunities for bad actors to, well, act badly. So that brings us to the end of the video for today. I do hope you enjoyed it. Remember, the full article can be found on the Ada Pulse website, along with all the other articles that I don't get time to make videos for. And uh, do remember to click the like button, hit subscribe and hit that bell button to get notified as soon as we've got content available. And do share far and wide. We do really appreciate it. And we do want to hear your comments as well. So I'm Josh from ATM Stakepool, your presenter for Ada Pulse. That's it. Thank you.